The world of mobile technology is one of the fiercest competitive markets ever. In the quest to stand out from the pack, some companies make bold moves and succeed brilliantly. Others are more meek and fade into the unexceptional background. Still others fill the space between, innovating once and then endlessly iterating over and over again. Then there are those that just screw it all up, thanks to choices that are either too bold, too meek, or just plain old absolutely insane. These are the products that fall flat on their face. They're not to be mocked, but the lessons they teach should certainly be remembered. And that's what we're here for. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is episode two of Worst Gadgets Ever, featuring the Microsoft Kin. Now, folks, this isn't a gift box for a bottle of brandy or a package of tennis balls. It's the packaging for the Kin 2. Now, right out the gate, it's plain to see that Microsoft was trying to do something different with the Kin line, and maybe that's the core tragedy of the whole endeavor. Anyway, let's crack this open and start the autopsy. For a new buyer, during the short amount of time the Kin was on sale... Opening the lid revealed an inner capsule much like an eyeglass case, showcasing the device itself alongside the usual product literature stamped with the ambitious statement, this changes things. Between the packaging and the messaging of the Kin brand, it's plain that Microsoft and Sharp were at one point really invested in shaking up the market. Let's take a look at the device. The Kin 2 bore the same rounded contours as its Kin 1 predecessor, but it threw out the rounded square form factor in favor of a more conventional, rectangular, side-sliding QWERTY. It didn't look too bad from the top, but from the side, the almost 16 millimeter thick device bore a close resemblance to a soap dish. It featured some cool touches, like the engraved moiré pattern on the camera key and the transparent rim around the phone's top half, but Overall, the hardware was hugely unimpressive. The plastics on the back felt low-grade, the phone felt too light in the hand, the button responsiveness was mushy on the side keys and not much better on the keyboard, and the slider action was loose and wobbly, feeling a lot like a first-edition Palm Pre. Our unit even replicates a problem that plagued some early Palm Pre's. Sliding it open too aggressively causes it to power off. From these failings to the hardware specs, a 320x480 display and a 600 megahertz processor with only 8 gigs of onboard storage, it was clear that the Kin wasn't going to be a superstar. But it was aimed not at a power user, but at a very particular kind of customer. The people at Microsoft in charge of building the Kin were the remnants of the company's acquisition of Danger, the brand behind the famous Hip Top or Sidekick, one of the earliest and most innovative lines of consumer-focused smartphones. Those devices were famously targeted at teenagers with fun, unique, and hip software, and the former Danger team brought that feeling to the Kin software as well. The UI design was clever, with a central home screen flanked on the left by an app list and on the right by a phone book. Fonts were bold and all caps, and the out-of-box color palette was an aggressive neon green mixed with gray gradients. A recent button down in the lower left served as a type of on-the-fly recent task switcher, the lone physical button on the face was used as a back key, and the coolest part of the UI, a concept we wouldn't mind seeing on other platforms, was the ever-present green dot on the bottom of the display. It served as a kind of drop point for shareable items. You could drag almost anything in there, from photos to web pages, and share them with your contacts via email, messaging, or what have you. It reinforced the Kin's nature as a social device, a platform meant primarily for connecting with people. The UI didn't exactly shine on the Kin 2's washed-out, low-res display, but you can see some early touches of the Zune-inspired Metro UI here. Remember, this was before Windows Phone's official launch, and the Kin 2 even bears its own flavor of Windows Phone branding on the back. But it's also easy to see why some people inside of Microsoft wanted the product killed off, and never associated with the company's new smartphone efforts. Where Windows Phone is fluid and responsive in addition to its beauty, the Kin 2 lags almost everywhere. And there are basic gaps in functionality, like the lack of an on-screen keyboard. What really killed the Kin, though, wasn't so much that it was a flawed product, 
All products are flawed in their infancy. The kin also didn't die because of its burdensome Verizon data plan, as is commonly believed. In reality, according to reports from other news sources, the kin's data plan fiasco was a symptom of a larger problem internal strife at Microsoft that saw two divisions fighting against each other, with the kin ultimately paying the price of being sent to market with essentially no support. The kin could have been a great product. Some ideas here, like the omnipresent share functionality, kin studio, and the emphasis on placing people first are worthwhile and compelling. But those ideas, like anything else, were doomed without the commitment of their backers. The Kin 1 and 2 are the adopted orphaned children of an indecisive parent, and the Kin 2 certainly looks, feels, and acts the part. The big lesson from today's episode, don't have kids if you're not ready to care for them. Folks, that's going to do it for episode two of Worst Gadgets Ever. Thank you for joining me. If you have a comment, please leave it on the post at pocketnow.com and visit us at pocketnow.com for much more coverage on the entire mobile industry. If you like the video, throw us a thumbs up. Follow us on Twitter so you don't miss the next episode of Worst Gadgets Ever. Pocket Now Tweets is the official account. If you want to follow me, I'm at Captain Two Phones. That's Captain the number two phones. If you have a suggestion for the next episode of Worst Gadgets Ever, we are going to do more, don't worry. Drop me a line, michael at pocketnow.com. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.